I want to thank the entire Lincoln Cycling community for making this event a great event and all your support over the years. Thank you so much. Hey guys, on behalf of Fleet Beat, I want to say thank you to all the runners that are joining us for Gravel World. We're excited to cheer you on for that 50K, 25K, and 10K. We will see you soon. Thank you hundreds of Gravel World volunteers for making event 2023 what it is. Love you, thank you, God bless. Thank you, City of Lincoln, for all you've done to uh, help make this an incredible event and welcome the thousands of people here to Lincoln for Gravel World. Make sure you check out all the fun things Lincoln, Nebraska has to do. What's up, Gravel family? I just want to give a huge shout out to our sponsors. Thank you so much, big and small. We are so appreciative of you. Hey, everyone. We want to thank the communities in Lancaster County, the surrounding counties around there, and here in Fallbrook. Thank you. Thank you, Gravel Family! All right, what's up, Gravel Family? I'm Jason. I'm gonna get into the rider video, but before we get into that, the people that were just uh, introducing this video, that's the entire Gravel Worlds team. I know I get a lot of attention on social media uh, because that's my job, uh, but it's an entire team. So be sure, if you see them, uh, be sure to thank them, thank the volunteers, uh, thank everybody that makes this event possible. Um, and it's not about me, it's about the whole team. So let's get into the rider video here um, and we're just gonna go through it as quick as we can. And uh, this should have all the information that you should need if you're coming to Lincoln. So let's make this happen. Uh, check in, how do we get it checked in? So uh, whether you're doing the 10K run all the way up to the 300 mile uh, race, uh, bike race, you have to check in. You have to get a, a number plate, you have to get uh, signed in so that you're uh, registered on our timing uh, and you get your swag bag and all that stuff. So if you've been to Gravel Worlds before in the last several years, uh, check-in is going to be in a similar place. It's not going to be in the church like normal, it's, but it's in the same building uh, on the same side of the building too. So you'll follow signs on the northwest side of the Schilling Bridge building and you will see check-in right there. Follow the signs primary check-in is Thursday noon to 7 p.m. and Friday 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, so those are your primary locations. If you at all can make that happen, make that possible. If the only time you can check in is early race day on the run or early race day on the bike, uh, the sign-in uh, early check-in starts at 4.30 in the morning. Again, we do not have the resources or volunteers to check in hundreds of people on race morning. So make that as a last possible ditch uh, op option for you. So there you go. Uh, race day, what to expect on race day. Uh, we recommend you be lined up for your race 30 minutes prior to your start time. So 6 a.m. for the 150, we recommend you get there about 5.30. Um, and be prepared for traffic. We got hundreds of people coming in. We do try to spread you out all around the neighborhood so you're coming in at different entrances. Uh, so be sure that you follow the instructions on your parking, which we will talk about that earlier. Um, for the start of the, the 150 race, similar to last year, we are having the elite women at the front. Uh, there will be a break and then uh, a, uh, of an ATV that'll be blocking and then there'll be the elite men. Outside of that, we will have uh, on the side of the road, you will see uh, timing estimates of uh, seven hours, eight hours, nine hours, 10 hours, and then I think 11, 12 plus. So please line up at your estimated finish time. So what you think about the time that you're gonna finish, line up at those timing spots on race day for the 75 and the 150. That's very important for safety. Um, that makes sure that you're not in over your head riding with the pros at the front that are going to be going way too fast for you. Also making sure you're not going to get left behind by people that uh, you could be riding with all day. So please, for safety and for a better experience for yourself, don't line up too far in the front. Uh, it definitely is not going to help you there. So, um, and then that should be it for race day. Line up behind the arch uh, and have a good time. Enjoy the hype and the, the, the pump up before we get going, before the quiet of the gravel seas start. All right, next up, we're gonna talk about rules. We have very few rules, but they're very important. So go ahead and follow along. Rule number one, always been the rule of gravel worlds, be cool. Uh, it's, it's really simple, but it goes a long way. So if you kind of have to ask, it's probably not cool. So basically the golden rule, be kind to other people, other people's things, and you're gonna be good to that. So some examples 
of being not cool, yelling at volunteers, cutting course, cheating, uh, walking on, or riding on, off of the public roads and onto private fields, uh, cussing out a competitor, uh, or hiding feedbacks on course, all of those are not cool. They go against all, all of our rules. So just be kind to other people. You're gonna be fine with us. Uh, be kind to our volunteers, be kind to our promotion staff, and you, we're gonna be all good. Rule number two is basically if we've deemed that you're super not cool in the past, we can uh, reject you being able to be a part of our event uh, in the current and in the future, so be careful with that. Rule number three, uh, you uh, bikes and helmets. This is obviously not for our runners. Uh, you do have to have a bike with functioning brakes. Uh, so even if you're riding with a fixie, you do have to have brakes on you. Uh, E-bikes are not allowed except in our 50K category. So that's a non-competitive race. Uh, so you can uh, use an e-bike in our 50K. Um, and then also helmets. You have to wear a helmet at all times. That includes group rides, that includes on the way to the course, uh, and everywhere you are out on course, a helmet is required at all times. Uh, and that does have to be a modern helmet. So no uh, like old school 1980s, 1990s pads on, on your head, it has to be a modern helmet. Rule number four, and we take this one very seriously, do not litter. Our roads around here are remarkably clean. We hope you notice that when you're here compared to a lot of other gravel races. Um, you might find a beer can or two, on, uh, or two on the course. You'll definitely probably see those from time to time. But overall, our course is clean and litter is how our race is gonna get shut down. It's an easy way for locals to say, hey look, they're trashing our roads because there's 500 gel packets out here. Um, Tossing bottles, no go. Like you, you are responsible for whatever you take out on course. You have to throw away or take back with you. Um, it's easy to take them, put them in your pocket. We have several places on course that you can throw away trash. So make sure you keep that with you. Rule number five: Plan your voyage. You are responsible for your excursion. Uh, this is a self-supported race. We'll get into that a little bit more, but you need to have a, a plan for your race. So uh, have a bailout option, have options for uh, your nutrition for that day. So you know what's going on, uh, but you are responsible for you. All right, rule number six, do not modify your number plate. This has kind of become an issue uh, more recently, trying to save a half a watt. Um, do not modify your number plate. The biggest reason is this actually drastically affects our timing, uh, which is a, a way, a big form of safety. We need to know where people are at what times. When you cross those timers, if you wrap your number plate around your head tube, those RFID tags do not work. So it affects the quality of our event. It affects our timing people that are running around all the time trying to uh, track you down to figure out what number plate just crossed uh, a timing plate or a finish line. So do not modify your number plates, do not do it. Rule number seven, uh, this is kind of also involving equipment. Bike lights are required uh, for the 150 and the 300. No, no questions about it, it's state law. It, we start the race at night. Uh, the biggest reason we start the race at night is to keep temperatures down. There's always a potential, it could be nearly 100 degrees, so we start in the dark. It's also really cool to be starting in the quiet, uh, calm of the day. Uh, in the dark. So bike lights are required for the 150 and 300 front and rear. Uh, then aero bars. We do allow aero bars, uh, but only if you are at the front of a group or by yourself. If you are in the middle of a pack with a, a group of people or just two people, if you're just drafting one person, aero bars are not allowed. That's simply for safety. Uh, you, If you're down in your aero bars, you can't react, you can't break. So um, aero bars are allowed if you're at the front of a group or by yourself. All right, rule number eight, um, respect your fellow athlete. This kind of goes back to rule number one. You'll notice a lot of our rules have just involved around respect. So rule number eight, respect your fellow athletes, encourage each other, help each other out in need. Um, disrespect of other athletes through harassment or profanities will not be tolerated and you will be disqualified. All right, and rule number nine, no outside support. Our race is, is self-supported. Once you leave the start line, every single athlete has the same opportunity as everybody else. Everybody has the same checkpoint experience. Everybody has the same gas station stops if they need it. Everybody has the same oasis. So if you, once you leave, you, that, you make sure you have everything you need. There's no team vehicles out on course. There's no uh, team members out at uh, checkpoints to hand stuff out to you. If there's something specific you need for your adventure, 
you need to bring that with you. So if that's a special nutrition, hydration, tools, whatever it is, you have to bring that with you. We will have nutrition options from Goo, Bonk Breaker, Salt Stick, uh, Cliff Bars, and as well as basic nutrition uh, and snacks out at our checkpoint. We have Piedmontese hot dogs back again. We'll have Cokes, chips, cookies, things like that. But if there's something specific you need and you can't find it at a gas station out on course, you need to bring that with you. Um, also with self-supported, navigation is on you. This year we are gonna be marking the run courses. So run courses will be marked. We recommend if you have your Garmin watch to still load your courses on there just to be safe. There's always a chance some kid's gonna be messing around and mess up our signs. So make sure if you can, we recommend you still have it on there. But on the bike side, you are responsible for, for your navigation. All the way down to the 50K, you are responsible for your navigation out on course. So make sure you have that with you in some fashion, whether that's an actual head unit, a Garmin head unit, or uh, you're using Strava or Ride With GPS or some other third party turn by turn direction, you have to have that out there. No pre-arranged team support. And again, I say pre-arranged. We understand there are gonna be times where somebody's gonna be drafting with a teammate. That's totally okay, but no domestiques, no uh, things like that where somebody's riding up ahead to fill up bottles, none of that. It's your race. It's your race versus everybody else's race. No team tactics here. Um, but also, that also means no team vehicles out on course. Uh, you can't have team vehicles out on course. We do allow media vehicles. If you want a media pass, reach out to us. We are being very strict on that this year of what that means. Uh, so if you have a media pass, you cannot interact with any athletes out on course. So um, yeah, no team vehicles, no interaction at all out on course with your athletes. This also means no driving out on course. I know we get this question a lot from family members. I know you're really excited to see your, your athletes out on course. But just for safety, just pure safety uh, reasons, we cannot have 2,000 vehicles of family members out on course. Courses kind of zigzag each other all over the place, so you might think you're on one course, but you're actually driving up and over a hill onto another course that you didn't know was there. So no driving out on course. If you are interested in being out on course, we recommend you volunteer at our checkpoint. Every single rider goes through our checkpoint, so not only do you get to help your rider and see and cheer them on, you get to cheer on everybody else. So no vehicles out on course. Of what, what is required out on course with self-supported? So every single person is required to go through our checkpoint. So we have two checkpoints on the 150, one on the 75, and one on the 50K. You are required to go through those. Uh, there is a timing mat to make sure that you do go through. You do, are not required to stop. So if, if you, that is a race strategy that you wanna carry 150 uh, miles of water and you don't wanna stop at the checkpoints, that's on you. You don't have to stop, you do have to go through them. There's also no racing inside the checkpoint areas. So when you're on the property of the, the checkpoints, you're not making moves there. That's not where you're gonna win or lose a race is actually making a move there, so keep your speeds down. Uh, we do have gravel cross this year at checkpoint one on the 150. So there is a cyclocross course that every rider is required to go and do. It's gonna be really fun. It's only like 0.4 miles that it adds on to the course, uh, but it'll uh, zigzag along the course there uh, on the farm of the checkpoint. Uh, we have several oases out on course. These are not required to stop at for anybody. Uh, so there'll be several several water stops, uh, several just oases sponsored by uh, different businesses. So those are not required, but if you wanna, uh, if you're out of water or need uh, some extra assistance, you can do that. There are also two gas stations on the 75 and 150 course. Those are uh, for you to use as you, as you wish. So go in there, get some snacks. If you need to use a restroom, go in there, uh, but go ahead and check those out. And like I said too, the last bit, is there something specific nutritionally that you need uh, that you need to bring that with you? So if there's a specific goo that you need or gel, if there's a specific allergy for food, you have to carry that with you. Uh, so no drop bags, no handouts out at the checkpoints. All right, next we are going to talk about parking. So on the expo day and check-in on Thursday and Friday, you can park at the Meredith parking lot or you can park on the grassy area behind Schilling Bridge next to the Expo. Uh, you'll see uh, signs out for that. 
please park in those areas. Do not park in the paved parking spots on Thursday and Friday. Please leave those for local businesses. Uh, they need to be running their businesses on Thursday and Friday, so we have plenty of parking for you uh, over at Emeritus and uh, in the green grassy area. On race day, uh, Friday, you will, uh, if you're doing the run, you can still park over at Emeritus uh, the, over there or in the grassy area when you check in. For bike racing day, you will receive a parking pass uh, when you check in of where you should be uh, going for race day check-in, or for, excuse me, race day parking. So follow the instructions. The instructions on how to get to those parking lots are on the back. So don't trust Google necessarily on those. We have roads shut down that day. So follow the instructions on the back of your check-in. Next, we're gonna talk about volunteers. So there's still time to volunteer. Uh, you can sign up at gravel-worlds.com forward slash volunteer. So go ahead and get signed up. Jamie Granquist is our uh, volunteer coordinator. You will be in communication with her. Uh, to check in for volunteering, check in where everybody else checks in. So there'll be a volunteer check-in space. If there's a super long line and you're volunteering, you can skip ahead uh, just to go to the volunteer check-in area. So you're make sure you're, you're where you need to be on time. Um, but yeah, just follow the instructions that Jamie gives you and uh, we're, we'll be all good. So volunteers get a pair of gooder uh, sunglasses, Pirate Cycling League uh, gooder glasses. They get a nice uh, Hoka Tech shirt. Uh, a meal ticket as well as a donation made on behalf of them to the Randy Gibson fund and a water bottle too so uh, lots of goodies there volunteering is a great time uh, if again like I said earlier if you are interested in seeing your athlete out on course we highly recommend you volunteer at one of our checkpoints those are uh, a safe place for you to uh, see your athletes and you also get to cheer on everybody else uh, but again you can't be out on course on race day all right and last we are talking about the schedule. So our full schedule can be found at gravel-worlds.com slash schedule. Uh, it's also right, there's links right on our homepage. So follow those, uh, see the full schedule. We have activities starting Wednesday night all the way into Sunday morning. So it's a full week of events. Wednesday night we have our rider party, uh, and rider and runner route discussion party at CycleWorks. So come there if you have questions about the route, the rules, or you just wanna hang out with us, uh, go there. We'll have beer from Zipline ready to go for you guys at, uh, at CycleWorks for free. So free, free beer Wednesday night. Thursday, we have the Expo uh, starting at noon until 7 p.m. So come out, hang out the Expo. We got check-in. We also have Thursday night, we have the Gooder Party. So it's kind of the kickoff party. Come hang out. We have a really fun, uh, like, rock, funk, hillbilly band that's really funky uh, band uh, scheduled for Thursday night. So we got three hours of live music Thursday night. Friday is full of activities. So many things. We have panels all day. We have group rides. We have... Uh, the expo, we have check-in, uh, we have uh, the 50k and 25k starting in the morning. And then we at night, uh, we have the long voyage send-off. We have uh, at 4 p.m., I believe, we have a new kids race that we're going to do through the expo, go around the roundabout, and each of the kids get their finish line. So if you're interested in helping with that or you have a kid that wants to do it after school on Friday, come on down and do our kids race bonus points for the best pirate uh, costume for our kids race uh, and then we have the mayor talking at 4 30 welcoming everybody five o'clock is the long voyage send off 5 30 is the first annual uh, gravel worlds land ho 10k uh, to send off and then after that when you get back from the run we have live music again with the zip line party on friday night lots of stuff on friday so much for you to do Saturday is obviously race day, so uh, be there early, be there with a good attitude. It's gonna be a great time, hoping for amazing weather, amazing times, amazing memories. Uh, so just make sure you follow the instructions from before, show up 30 minutes earlier to your race to make sure you're there on time. And we're gonna have live music from noon until uh, 6 p.m. I think, and then our ceremony at 7 p.m. at night. We're also encouraging you to please stay until 10 or 11 p.m. Uh, when we have our DFL coming through. So be there to support everybody. So thank you so much, everybody. We appreciate the support. We cannot wait to have you here in Lincoln. We'll see you. Fly up. I got that on video. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we started. Okay. What, wait, how do I start it? <laughs>